Hello friends, welcome to A Shot of Code. Today we're looking at Pika Pack, which is a way to push your library up to NPM and have it in a few different formats depending on how people want to use your package. So it makes this process a lot easier for us and a lot more consistent as well. So we can have a package put up there for node users, a package for web users and a package for um, pre-bundled users who just want to pull it in from unpackaged.com. So lots of different ways that you can you can push it up there and it's all going to be consistent and you're not going to have to worry about getting it wrong. You know, when I've written a library before, I've never been quite sure what I should be pushing up uh, to NPM. Should I be putting up a bundled version? Um, should I be putting up ES 2018, uh, a, a node version? I don't know. Uh, but this this takes that away from us and should make things a lot easier. It's, you know, it takes away a lot of the boilerplate release code as well. We're just going to issue a Pika Pack publish and it will go away, bump the NPM version, create a tag in GitHub. Um, yeah, lots of things. Let's let's jump in and, and have a look at, at what it can do for us. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let's create a folder for this. So we'll have Pika test and let's get in there. And then I'll install. Well, let's let's get a package.json first. So we've got the standard package.json. Now let's install Pika pack and also Pika. CLI and we'll just store those locally. We can we can have a global install of those as well. Um, and I have actually got that on this computer, so it might be worth doing um, a minus G install there as well. Let's just let wait for this to finish for a minute. And it's done. Okay. Okay, we've got those. Let's open up Visual Studio Code. And we're not going to see anything at the moment. All we've done is add our Pika CLI and Pika pack into our package. Now, say we're making a library. I'm going to create a source folder because this is the convention that Pika likes. So it wants a source folder and inside there it wants an index.js file. That's fine. That just means less configuration for us to do to tell it where these things are. So we'll have an, a function in here in our library. And it's just going to do nothing. But it will serve a purpose for us. OK, so we just got a very simple file there in the source folder. Um, now to kick off a build, we've got to specify what outputs we want. Um, Pika Pack is going to create a package folder, a PKG folder for us, and in there it will have whatever outputs we've asked it for. So let's jump onto the Pika Pack website just to pull that in. So if you go to uh, pikapkg.com, be able to get a lot more information on this. Let me just boost that up a bit. Okay, if we scroll down here, um, and I'm just going to take their standard, uh, one of the standard set of outputs that they've got specified here. It's going to create a standard output, which will be ES2018, a uh, build node, which will be one that requires, uses require JS, uh, sorry, common JS and, and require to, to use the library, and a web one. Um, which we will be able to use with a bundler like Webpack or Rollup. Okay, so let me copy that, come back in here. In our package.json, we just want to pop that in somewhere. So I'll put that there and save that off. Now, each of these outputs requires a little a plugin. So we've got to install these plugins as well. So let's go back here and do an npm install. Again, dev dependencies, we're going to need the plugin standard. We're going to want the node one. And we're going to want the web one. 
All right, and we'll just install those. Okay, with those in place, we should be able to run uh, Pika Build to create our package. Um, let me just say, you know, you probably want this on the on the global as well. So we'll have a um, Pika Pack and an at Pika CLI installed globally. Wait for this to install. Okay, we're back. Right, uh, what do we do? We installed, uh, mainly we installed our three plugin packages here. So we should be now allowed to run. Uh, I'm just gonna take this test script out because we don't want that. Um, and it causes a problem later. Um, just because PikaPack actually runs that test and it just fails because of that. Uh, right, so what can we do? Let's create our first build of our package. We can say Pika and build. Let's see what that does. Uh, it did not like that. It's because of that. It mentioned Babel, but no, it was a typo. Okay, there you go, that's built a lot better. You can see this package folder here, we've got this source this node, this web. Let's go in here into Visual Studio Code and we can see them. So in this node, there we've got our index.js and it's adding it um, to the exports object. So you'll be able to pull that in with require. In the source, we should have plain ES2018, nothing applied to it. And then in the web, one that's more useful um, for using in web scenarios. All right, so, and there's very, you know, I think there's, there's other plugins you can have as well and um, transforms that you can do onto your code. I think, you know, TypeScript ones, you can get it to output a .d.ts type definition file for you. Uh, yeah, so a few, a few options there. Um, and when we publish this, it's now just gonna publish this package folder with its own package.json that is created here which means it set these sort of things up for us. The ES next, the ES2018 in this source, our main for, for node apps, and a module for um, ES modules web usage in there. All right, so that's quite nice. You don't have to, you don't have to get um, your package.json set up correctly here. And when we push this up, it's not gonna be pushing up uh, other things like tests and source code. It's just going to be pushing up to npm our um, our output files that are ready to use. I'll just make another couple of changes in our package.json. Let's put it down to 0.0.1 uh, and the test is the name. Actually no, I will name it um, so that it goes into a scoped package on npm. So if you've got an at and some name your package will go beneath that scope package so we won't pollute the global scope. I'll delete this after the uh, the test anyway, but that's just 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 in case I forget. Right. So we'll save that off. Uh, and then when when I build that again now, it should update the uh, the package.json that we're distributing, which is this one here, and it's updated that in there now as well. Um, so yes, you know, same things like side effects, faults and stuff here, so it can be used for tree shaking. So it's doing a lot of good stuff in the package.json for us, and we don't, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, now let's try and get this onto NPM then. We're gonna try and put those three um, folders up there um, that can then be consumed, depending on um, the, the consumer, which one they're looking for, they'll get the correct folder. So it's all mapped here for the client, the user of the library. Okay, let's go into uh, GitHub and we'll create a repository for this. 
and then we can uh, we can use it there. So let's have um, pick a test, pick a test one. Obviously, I've done a test before. Okay, pick a test one. We'll see create there. Uh, now if I grab that, I should be able to come in here, and one of the first things I want is a, is a git ignore. So let's do a dot git ignore, and in there we'll put node modules. Okay, that's good. Now I can do a git in it, and then let's see what we've got. Git status, good. So let's do a git um, add, and let's commit that as our initial initial commit okay and then we need to say where we are we need to point now to our our remote repository so let's do a, a git remote add origin and we'll put that there and then we should be able to do a git push to origin master and that should push that up for us now, when we use Pika Publish, so we've used Pika Build, which has created that for us. Pika Publish will build it as well, but it will also push it up. But it needs to be in a Git repository, and it needs to be clean. You can't have any outstanding commits. So let's have a look what we've got. Everything's clean there at the moment. Um, it does want uh, one other thing as well. It wants a version script. Let's go back to Pika Pack. Um, and see if we can find where it says this. I don't know if it shows it on there. And it does, it does actually add this in for us. So if I run it, we'll get an error and it will update our package for us. So we can now do um, pika publish. And it's going to say mission version script. And if we come back in here now, and look in our package.json. It's actually added it in straight away. It'd be nice if it said it's added it for us. Um, so it's gonna do an npx and run pika pack there for us. So that's good, but we still need to remember we need a clean GitHub. So let's do a git um, commit and get this clean again. So Pika updates and then push that up. All right, now, now I should be able to do Pika publish and I think this will work. Okay, so he's gonna do a 0.0.2. Uh, it's gonna be public, yes. Now, I think this does give me one more error because of this down here. The first time we run it, it tries to enable two factor authentication. Uh, I haven't got that set up and it fails there. When I run it again, that step disappears. I guess it, I don't know if it learns or that shouldn't be there or either way, we're gonna have to run it twice. Um, so let's just let this bit complete to start with. So let's check git, so let's check we've got a clean repository. Um, runs the test, we remove the test, so that didn't fail. Then we bump npm to 0.0.2. So it actually does it on npm with uh, the command npm patch, something like that. Done in 0.66 seconds. That felt longer. That definitely felt longer.
Okay, so pushing the package up to npm now. Normally it's a lot quicker than this. Okay, and then we failed on the two-factor authentication. So let me just, um, if I simply run it again now, we'll notice that it doesn't try to do that this time. So we say yes, yes, um, yeah, and you can see in the list there's no two-factor authentication there. Oh, it got me, got me with the tree. What does it change this time? I just want to see what that has actually done. Activity bar. Ah, it's just the version number. Okay, uh, let's just undo the version number. That's fine. Okay, so we should be very clean now, and we should be able to do Pika publish. So yes, and yes, and let's get it up there. Okay, a bit quicker this time. Yeah, man. Let's get in there. It's gonna do it. It's gonna do it. Oh, there we go. Okay, published to npm, and also now pushing the tag, so we'll get a tag link between GitHub and npm. I think it brings up, even opens the GitHub page. Let's see if it does it here. As before, yeah, I'm not sure why I didn't do that, but let's go on to npm. And then look at the packages I've got. And if we scroll down the bottom, we got uh, much inside Pika test here a few seconds ago. So if I go in there, we can see uh, what have we got? We got our version um, and how to install. And when you install, it's just going to bring down that that simple package. Um, let's. Let's grab that. Let me grab it. Oh, copied. Yeah, okay, thanks. Let's go. Um, let's open a new command. And let's go back into Pika. And have a consume. All right. Um, and so we do an npm init in here and then install our new package that we just put onto npm then we can have a look at exactly what it gives us okay and then if i open up code now and look in there so what's it installed pika test and the three folders that we created each of our plugins um, and that package.json that we saw with those specific uh, mappings for yes next main and module so pretty nice setup in there um, takes a lot of the you know a lot of the work away uh, and and we're gonna have we're gonna have a consistent package and you can have it in the right format for uh, the people that are going to use your library um, okay, so there you go. That's that's Pika Pack. It's another one. Um, Fred K. Scott is the the man, the main man. There's obviously a few people working on it, um, but he's also got Pika Web. If you're interested in that one, got a video for that here. 
Uh, but otherwise, there you go. Pika Pack. Hope you enjoyed. And if you did, click that subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Bye.